This video is one in a series of videos covering how to make a car body for automation, the car company tycoon game, from start to finish. In this video, I'll discuss how to export your file from Blender, import it into Unreal, set up your mod, cook, and test your car body mod. You might have noticed all of a sudden the Civic is gone, and in its place is this weird ramp truck. Well, since the Civic is going straight vanilla, and I'm using an internal developer version of Unreal, showing that process would be of no use to you. However, I have this ramp truck, which is based on another vanilla body I did, but this will be a mod. It doesn't really matter, the process is the same for you, it's just a different body. So let's go. I'll start by selecting the armature in Blender, then box select the body and bound boxes. I'll press F4, which will call up the file context menu, and I'll select export FBX. This will bring up the export window. I'll first find the file I want to export it to, which in this case is somewhere in a folder on my desktop. I can actually create a new folder right here from the export window. No need to open up Windows File Explorer to do that. Now I'll name my FBX file. In this case, it'll be 78 Ramp Truck. Now on the right side, I'll tick the Selected Objects box. If you don't do this, you'll export everything in your blend file rather than just the things you selected. I'll expand the Geometry tab and change the Smoothing to Faces, and I'll tick the Tangent Space box. Now I'll expand the Armature tab and untick the Add Leaf Bones box. With that finished, I can now export the car body as an FBX file. Let's launch the Unreal Editor now. We are going to be using 4.24.3, which as of the making of this video only exists on the open beta branch of Automation, but it will be public soon. If you need some help about where to get it, I'll link another video in the info tab and in the video description. Don't be surprised if the editor or the automation project hang for some time, around 45 or 98%. That's pretty normal. The slower your computer and the fewer processor cores you have, the longer the compiling shaders and generating mesh fields might take. If the automation project isn't automatically found, you may need to browse through Windows Explorer to find it and let the launcher know where it's at so it can point to it in the future. My project is right here. If your project doesn't appear, click on More, then click Browse and point to the launcher at the location where you move the automation project to. Don't point it to the default SDK location. Put it in a folder on the root level in a drive on your PC. You may be waiting for shaders to compile for some time. Once the editor is open, you may need to expand the Sources panel and make sure Show Plugin Content is selected from the View options. Let's start our mod. At the top of the screen, select the Create Mod button. If you've made mods before, you might be wondering where all the templates are. Well, they're gone. Forever. But don't sweat, Uncle Rooster is here to show you what to do. Just select the blank mod and fill in the name, author, and description fields like you normally would. Then click the Create Mod button. You'll be taken to your new mod folder, which is totally empty. Another thing that has changed is we no longer will be using blueprints for car body mods. That may be scary, but trust me, the new asset file is much better. Just right click inside the empty folder space, find the CAMSO field, and create a new body variant preview data file. Go ahead and rename it to something that makes more sense for your mod now. Let's import our body. I'll find the import button towards the left of the screen, and I'll navigate to the FBX file we just exported from Blender. Now let's make sure the skeletal mesh box is ticked and the skeleton field is empty. Now click this little button to expand the rest of the dialog and untick Import Meshes in Bone Hierarchy, and tick Import Morph Targets. These are your shape keys. Now, change the normal input method to import normals and tangents, and we can now collapse that portion of the import dialog. Expand the next one down under the animation section. Untick import meshes and bone hierarchy here as well, and collapse that dialog. Now, under material, select all assets from the search location dropdown, and do not create material from the material import method dropdown. With that done, you can click the Import button and import your mesh. 
Double click on the mesh asset, which is the one with the pink line below it, and change the windows material from the default black to the red material. If you don't do this, your windows will show up white when exporting to BeamNG Drive, which if you don't know, is a game where you can drive your cars in from automation. Now let's double click on the body variant preview data file. First, I'll drag the mesh asset into the skeletal mesh field. I'll expand the car material settings and make sure the default materials are set the way I want them. I'll change the trim to paint so that the trim slot will be body colored by default. Next, I will generate new family and variant IDs. If you have more than one body variant, you'll simply copy this preview data file once it's fully set up and change the variant ID while keeping the family ID the same. I'll actually come back later and change the ID here to be the same as the vanilla body this truck is based on, so the mod will appear in the same family. Now under preview, I will give the body a reference name. Under the settings field, I'll start assigning information to the file to let automation know just what this is. I'll have to pretend this is a truck, so I'll select truck under the variant body type dropdown. Set your unlock year. You generally want this to be a few years before the actual body year, as it takes a few years of development to actually make a car in campaign mode. So if you have something like a 1982 truck, you'll select the unlock year to something like 1978. Use your best judgment. If it's a luxury or a supercar, you might want to make the time frame even longer, as it generally takes longer to engineer fancy dancy cars. I'll set the doors here to two. If you have a hatchback design, count that as a door also, so you may have something like a three or five door vehicle. Now I'll set the maximum seat rows to one, and I'll add an array element and give that a two. This will start the truck off with a pair of captain's chairs. If I choose three, I'll get a bench seat. You could do one if you have some kind of special one seat supercar or race car body. I'm going to skip over the disable suspension settings on this one, but some car bodies don't do well with certain suspensions. McPherson struts, for example, often clip through very low slung bodies. You can disable those suspension types in this section so users can't select suspensions that aren't compatible with your model. If you have a convertible, you'll choose here whether it's a soft top or a hard top convertible. Hard top is not something like a Miata with the detachable hard top option. It's more like a fancy Lexus with the folding retractable hard top. The game calculates it is very heavy and quiet and expensive, so use it accordingly. The cargo subtracts options is for things like vans, people movers, or hatchbacks, or anything where the cargo bounds box intersects with the passenger bounds box. It lets automation know that it needs to subtract either cargo space or passenger space in your vehicle when you add or remove rows of seats, or just in general in the case of something like a cargo van. Now I'll add an array for engine placement. I covered this in detail in an earlier video, so I'll keep it short here and the engine arrays you need for the body here. Since this is just a front engine vehicle, I'll add the front engine array now. I'm going to highlight everything now and save it because in order to finish the setup, I need to be in the car thumbnail generator level. So you can activate the viewport and press Control O to open the level menu, or you can find it in the file dropdown menu here. I'll make sure the content folder is selected on the left and I'll type car in the search field. This will narrow everything down to just the car thumbnail generator level. Select and open the level. If you get a warning screen, don't worry about it. Just close it. You only need to worry about this if you get red errors. At the top of the screen, next to the play button, there's a small drop down arrow. I'll click the arrow and select simulate from the options. Now at the top right in the world outliner, I'll type in A underscore B and that will filter out all the stuff I don't need, and I'll select the A body edit scene blutility. Everything we need to interact with is in the default menu on the right. I'm going to select my preview data file. I know it's selected when it turns yellow. Now in the default menu, I'll find the variant asset and I'll click on this tiny little arrow next to it. This will load the data file. 
Now, if I press load body, my body mod will appear. Now everything appears to be missing because all the values are set to zero. So I'll reopen the data preview file and under the chassis and wheel sections, I'll start entering some numbers. For wheels, I'll just make them all 50 for now with 16 inch rims and 225 millimeter width. I still can't see them because they're all smushed into the center of the chassis. So I'll start expanding the chassis dropdown tabs and entering some values. I'll start with a wheelbase value, but to see it, I'll want to move into right orthographic view. Currently there is a bug in the editor where back is right, front is left, right is front, so you may have to fumble around a bit to figure it out, but I want to see the truck viewed from the right orthographic wireframe, so I'll find my way there. If you're not new to modding, you should immediately notice the improvement to the wireframe and how it contrasts nicely with the rest of the scene. This makes setup a lot easier to see. I'll adjust the wheelbase until it starts to look like I've got the right length, but as you can see, the whole chassis is too far back. So what do I do? We change the Y offset value to compensate. Now I can fine tune the wheelbase. I'll quickly switch into front view and set up the track width. Back to the right side and I'll expand the vertical position tab. I'll set the default suspension height fairly high for a truck body like this. The vertical offset can help you position the body higher or lower in relation to the chassis as needed. In my case, since I model with a base of the body level with the Z-axis ground plane and blender, I don't need to make an adjustment here. I'll expand the front tab now and I'll set the front firewall distance. I'll also change the nose length to set how far forward the chassis should protrude. There is a cab over tick box here, which you should use if you were making a cab over style design vehicle. This however is not, so I'll skip it. Now I just need to expand the rear tab and set the rear length. Since I don't have a rear engine, I can ignore the rear firewall. It will default to 97.5. I'm done with orthographic view, so I'll go back into perspective view and set the tire sizes. I can click the load body button again to get the car out of the floor. Now I'll change the tire size and figure out what I want the minimum size to be. Once I have something that looks right, I'll input that value into the minimum field. I'll do the same for the maximum tire size field. Then I'll set the default size to some happy medium and make sure the rim diameter and width is something I'm happy with. I'll move down to the arrow tab and I'll input some arrow values. There is a spreadsheet you can use to try to calculate this, or you can just try to guesstimate based off values of other cars in game or real world cars. If you use real world car values, make sure you subtract 10 to 20% as the value should represent the amount of drag of the body with no grill or cooling. The amount of grill based airflow drag is calculated in game based on engine power and your cooling slider setting. Cool, now with all that entered, I'll reload the body one last time so it's nice and ground level for its glamour shot. And I'll hit the update and save button, which will create the thumbnail and an extra data file and save everything. But just to be safe, I'll select everything and save it again. Now I'm going to set my bone limits. I'll click on the car body in the viewport and you'll see a bunch of blue and maybe some red bones. Red bones just mean there are no vertex groups associated with them, so you can ignore them. Just set the blue bones.
To set limits, just drag a bone one way, right click and select add to limits. Then move the bone the other way and repeat. Do that for all bones. Once you're done, go back and update and save again. To tell me how to live now we can share our mod. At the top of the screen, select Share Mod and choose the mod you're currently working on. Share it to a folder of your choosing. Now it's time to test our mod before we publish it. I'll show you how to test it by putting the mod files in the correct location and how to launch the game so that the mod appears. I have one instance of File Explorer already open, pointed to the drive where my Steam folder is. Next to that, I'll open up the mod folder I just cooked to my desktop. Inside, you'll see a Windows No Editor folder. Open that up, then open the Automation Game, then the Mods folder. This is where your mod is. Now I need to open up the folder where it goes, so I'll go to my Steam folder and open it. Then I'll open the Steam Apps folder, then the Common folder, then the Automation folder, then the UE424 folder, then the Automation Game folder. Mods no longer go in the Plugins folder. Now there is a Mods folder. You should have a Mods folder shortcut like this. If not, just make a folder and name it Mods then drag your mod into the mods folder. Now open up Steam and launch Automation. As of the making of this video, this process only applies to the open beta version, but it will become part of the main stable branch soon. So during open beta, we will launch the game with the no launcher open beta option. But once the branch is stable, you would just choose the no launcher option. Now we can make a new car and check out our car body. Mine shares the same GUID as one of the vanilla bodies, so this one is nested within an existing family. Your mod should be on its own with its own family. I'll test out the bone limits and make sure I don't have any interference. I'll also stamp some headlights on and check for any UV tearing or UV stamping symmetry issues. Looking good, I'll show you how to publish your mod to the Steam Workshop in the next video. This will conclude this video. If you found it useful, give the video a like and hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this one as they're released. See you next time!